Ah, uh, Sweeping Edge 3. I don't want to waste my beautiful diamond sword on that. Well, what can I do? I can reset the enchants, but I don't have any torches. Ah, oh, I'm so, so frustrated right now. Oh. Well, isn't that nice? That is very nice. How did I ever come up with such a brilliant idea? Well, simple. I stole it from Mr. ZF. Granted, in his episode 10 on Hermitcraft, he had some problems with the timings, and that is why I am here today. So I would like to thank Mr. ZF on the Hermitcraft server for inspiring me to do this redstone build today. So we've all had the issue where we were at the enchanting table and we didn't like what we saw, so we wanted to reset our enchant. One of the ways you can do it with torches, or if you want to be a bit more aesthetic or mystical about it, you can use water. Now, not everyone wants to carry buckets of water just to reset their enchants, but I do like the aesthetics of having water flowing around and then into these little holes. But the problem is if you cover your holes too quickly, the water will just kind of form puddles and it kind of defeats the purpose of this. Because the idea is that you are elegantly resetting your enchants. So the whole timing is kind of the most important part and that's what we're going to try to focus our time on today. So for this build, if you're doing it the way I have it, you'll want nine sticky pistons, three observers, 16 redstone dust, three blocks of redstone, two torches, three comparators, 11 repeaters, two hoppers for your hopper clock, 16, well, two stacks of 16 ender pearls, some sources of water box, slime box, half slabs, and then your decor. So when you launch your arrow, it will press this wooden button here, and it will stay there for about a minute, which gives you enough time to reset your enchants. And then when the button is pressed, it's going to power this block. So when that block is powered, that comparator can sense it, and then it sends that signal to this repeater. And since it's going to be sending a signal to a piston, you want it on a two tick delay in your F3 screen mode real quick. Top right corner, that red word false, above that is west, above that is two, and that's how you know you're on the correct tick of delay. And then that goes into this block, which then powers the block, which then powers the piston. Since the piston's attached to a bunch of slime blocks, it pushes the slime blocks down, which then pushes the redstone block down and into this dust. And then when that dust is lit, it powers that repeater, which then that repeater powers this block which then you can take out of the wall, which is nice because then you can have this giant facade hiding some of that ugly redstone back there. And then when the wall block is powered, this repeater can take that power and put it into this block. You want this block to be here because it splits this signal for you. And then with the signal being split, you can have an always on state for this piston to stay extended. And then you can split it into a pulse state. So when this block is powered, it powers dust here as well as below it. When that dust is powered, it powers this block, which then powers this repeater. When this repeater has an update, this observer sees it and sends a quick pulse into this block, which then quickly pulses this piston and this line of dust which then of course pulses this block which then of course pulses this piston real quick. This is the hover clock that I am using. So F3 screen again, top right corner, green lettering saying true. So this hopper is not blocked. And then you have to provide an update. So you see these inner pearls are staying there and then that means it was locked. Now 
with since the arrow has despawned, this counter is counting down, and the ender pearls are rolling into that. As the ender pearls flow out, this comparator detects that, and that's why the signal length will change. So that quick pulse allows for this redstone block to power this dust all the way up here and then to this block. When this block is not powered, this redstone torch is on. But when this block is powered, this redstone torch is off, which then this will be off and then that piston will retract and thus your hole will open. This is mirrored on this other side. So again, you take the dust that's powering this block. So power block, redstone torch will go off, but your repeater will go on. So then that powers this block here, which then powers this block, then powers this repeater. This block is on, which then of course turns off this torch. So both of your torches on both of your sides are off. And then your repeater is, of course, off, and then your piston is retracted. And when your arrow despawns, the torches turn back on eventually, and then your pistons will extend, covering up your holes. So the main beauty of this is as this hopper is getting locked, these inner pearls are going in and then this is powering up. So when, if you're trying to look at your power level again, top right corner, bottom, you see west none, south none, power 10. So when that arrow despawns, it will cause these blocks to alternate. So this block will go back, this block will come forward, and the items will flow out, which gives this redstone signal a chance to stay on. You could have done this in a slightly more simple way, but it doesn't look as nice. It is like a pulse lengthener using comparators. And if you want me to do a video on pulse lengtheners with comparators or repeaters, I'll be more than happy to do that for you or anyone at all or everyone. Or no one in particular. Anyways, this signal slowly fades as the inner pearls go into here, and that's why you have that kind of delay with the holes opening and closing relative to your arrow despawning. And then I'm not sure if you're able to see that, but basically when this signal goes up here and activates this piston, this observer block detects it and powers this block and then that dust gets powered quickly which causes this piston to get powered quickly which then causes this block to get left behind when it does an extension and then when your arrow despawns this block will get pulled away and this observer will observe there's a block in my face versus oh there's not a block in my face when that observer detects that change, it sends a quick pulse each time to this piston. This piston is actually quite key because it moves this block of glass, which cuts off the water flow for you. And it's kind of nice to have and kind of necessary because you need updates to the water. If you didn't have an update, the water wouldn't stop flowing. It's just the way Minecraft water works, fortunately or unfortunately. So yeah, you have two pistons that operate on a quick pulse so the blocks will get left behind, and then you have two more pistons that operate in that similar fashion. When you don't want a quick pulse because you want your block to stay attached to your sticky pistons, you want them on a two tick delay. So the pistons or the sticky pistons here that are attached to your box of glass need to be on a two tick delay. And again, F3 mode, you see locked false east above that and two. And that's how you know you're on a two tick delay. 
So that, in a nutshell, is how this works. Uh, feel free to kind of pause the video at any point so that you kind of know how everything works and looks. And then, until next time, this is Hemoglobin, hoping that you have a great day and a great build. Thank you, and goodbye.